We have little Daniel. One dollar. And David. Fifteen dollars. Little Hannah. One dollar. John Joy Smith. Two dollars. Sarah. Four dollars. Jeremiah, two dollars. She had a books, thirty dollars. And down to Samaya, two hundred dollars. Got a wagon, six hundred dollars. Then I say, uh, the goal that your labor is that in me. And when you make sacrifice to give to God's kingdom, a record is kept. And many times when you believe that you are not blessed with God, as I said the other night and told you often, look at where you're at today. Not in jail cell, not in the hospital room, not in somebody's cemetery, but you're in the church of God. You seek his face and deliver him. Yeah. But that we ought to be overjoyed. I'm happy that he saved me one day out of my sins, brought me out of a false church into holiness. Heard a holiness preacher over the radio. I said, I got to go and see about them people. Talking about Jesus and God. I said, I got to go and see about this. He said, Christmas is a sin. I said, I know I got to see about this. Didn't always agree. First few times when the minister taught, I remember getting out of my car and saying, I'll never go back to this church again. But when the door was open, I was right back. Because something in my heart desired to know the truth. You know, nobody wants to be lied to all the time. In the first church, they lied to you all the time. Hallelujah. They tell you Jesus loved you, that's true. But they don't tell you what you must do to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, would they not should perish, but they all come to repentance. What is repentance? Repentance is the last teaching Jesus gave on Luke chapter 24, verse 44, I believe, 44 and 45. That repentance and remission of sins be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And when Peter preached the first sermon on the anointing of the Holy Ghost to introduce the New Testament church, and Testament means covenant, the New Covenant church, they asked Peter what to do to be saved. And he said, repent each and every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. He never said get baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's one of the big slides that put on the Christian church. I therefore baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That is not what the apostles taught. The apostles taught baptism in Jesus' name. Why? Because Jesus is the testator to the New Testament covenant. In order for you to uh, cash your check, you've got to go and sign your name. You can't sign Father, though you're Father. But you can write Father down all day long and they're still going to ask you, well, yeah, but what's your name? The name of salvation is Jesus. Right. Neither is salvation any other, for there's no other name under heaven about you. Must be saved. And that saving name is Jesus. Why? Because he died for your sins. And he's the only one who can make an intercessor for you. Why? Because he's God in the flesh. He came in human form. It was handled by men, spit on, beat on, and nailed to a cross. But I like that what Peter said to the Pharisees. Have you known who he was? Right. Watch closely. You would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Right. Lord, come down to our knees. God. Have you known who he was? He came in the flesh. He didn't know who he was. His disciples didn't even know who he was for a minute. Have you known who he was? You would not have crucified the God of glory. How they do that. But he was crucified in a human body that he can redeem humanity back to himself. But brothers and sisters, he always was God. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1, 
the Bible says, I am Alpha and Omega, Jesus, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord. Amen. Which is and is to come and was to come, the Almighty. Yes. Now, if you examine the Hebrew word Almighty, it's held in three contexts. It means mighty God, it means God Almighty, it also means Almighty God. And the singular word Almighty oftentimes is used. That's the Hebrew word El Shaddai, which means again God Almighty, Mighty God, or simply Almighty. So when Jesus said, I'm the Almighty, the Hebrew word was El Shaddai, what was he saying? I'm God Almighty. Amen. And I believe the prophet Jeremiah went back in the ninth chapter, and unto you a son was born, a, a child was given, the government shall be upon his shoulders, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. Amen. And the everlasting Father. Hallelujah. That's why when Jesus, hallelujah, was teaching his disciples, hallelujah, Philip said, show us the Father and it satisfies us. And Jesus said, have I been so long time with you? Yet you don't know who I am. When you see me, you see the Father. Why well, saith unto me, show us the Father. Believe us now, this, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. I said the Father is an invisible spirit. He's omnipresent. He's in every true believer. But the personality of the spirit is a body. And that body is the Lord Jesus Christ. The personality of the invisible spirit. Not two, but one God with the spirit in one. And that same spirit is in all of us who truly believe that Jesus is God come in the flesh to redeem humanity and bring humanity back to himself. I thank God again that I heard the message preached. And I thank God that I accepted it. I didn't always understand it, but I accepted it. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. The word of God comes to us, but it's always backed up by the code of obedience. God will tell you and give you an instruction, but it's up to you to obey. He you don't press a button and say, yes, Lord, I'll do what you tell me to do. And press another button and say, no, I won't do what you say. He gives humanity a freedom of thought. I believe in Deuteronomy, he said, See, I've set before you this day, life and good, evil and death. Choose whom you will serve. And that was in Deuteronomy. That's way back in the Torah. Oh, who you going to serve? So it's up to an individual to make a choice. I can serve God, or I don't have to serve God. Or I can go to a false church where they tell me Jesus loves me in spite of what I do. That's another lie. Don't never let nobody tell you that you can still continue a life of sin and you're still saved. That defeats the whole intent or purpose of Jesus. He come to take away your sins. But there's something you gotta do. What's that? You can't go back to sin no more. How do I do that? I'll give you my spirit. I'll press it down on the inside of you. And then when you would do wrong, that spirit said, no, don't do that. The hardest thing for me to break when I got saved and got the Holy Ghost, the hardest thing for me to break, you know, I was, I was a professional gambler. Amen. And I'm not bragging. I'm truly sorrowful. But I'm just telling you the truth. And the hardest thing for me to break, I do a poke and all that mess. I give it up. But that lottery window, when you go to the drugstore and you see that sign get fourteen million dollars for a dollar, oh praise God, it's amazing. And I, I just tried to resist it. It took me, I say, about six, seven months for me to get break that happen. Because you know what I, I would say? I say, Lord, if you let me hit, I'm gonna give half the money to you. God don't need a dollar for me. The cat one thousand years belongs to me. All the gold mines belong to God. But He allows humanity to make the personal sacrifice and commitment to establish the criteria of his church. You know, he could tell the pastor about the backyard and that there's a tree, I'll give him a $100 bill, just pick you what you need. He doesn't do it that way. He goes to the people and tell the people to pay their tithes and also give what? Give their offerings. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse, saith the Lord, and prove me here with it. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, it shall not be able for you to receive. 
tithes and offerings. Offerings is what the Nita asks for. Tithes is what's automatic. Tithes is taken from the word tenth. And Jacob said, of thee I'll give a tenth. Everything to the Lord God Jehovah. All earnings I'll give a tenth to. And some people pay all their bills and they say, I'll give a tenth. But you might not, if you're a working cash you ain't got nothing left. You don't never give God what's left. You give God this 10% from the top. Why? Because he's best you give the best. Oh, Hallelujah. So I'll give that 10th, and then I'll give my offering. What is the offering? What the leader says. I give my offering. And my time. And I said before, many of us give above measure. Ain't nobody in this church even getting no $800,000 every month. $600, $700. Uh, I believe we got an offering in last week. $2,200, I believe. Yeah. My sister who works two jobs. Why? I want to give more to the church. You think God don't recognize that? Oh, hallelujah. And that's why we can bring people off the street. Say, here's the thing we need We don't get no outside money. We help the young children in place to get federal grants. How much you need? 150000 this year, 200000 here. We don't get a penny. Matter of fact, if the federal government was, was able, they'd shut us down. Why? Because we speak out against lesbian behavior. Speak out against sodomy. Speak out against all this wicked sinfulness that you're running into the sanctified church. Loose here. In the name of Jesus. God church is a holy church. And for you to be holy, you got to have some church inside of you. He's not coming back to the building. He's coming back for a soul. Each soul is precious in the sight of God. But you can't live right. If you're not first taught right. You gotta be taught, hallelujah. Oh praise God. Now I'm gonna get to my sermon in a minute. But can I hear from the bells of joy? Other here plus one. Amen. Amen. Singing my favorite song. Praise the Lord. Lord. Yeah. 
in his life. He said, I don't want no more of this. Read. Right. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with, it, with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for sin. He would rather suffer with the Hebrew people in order that he might see God's face in peace. And he rejected the calling of Pharaoh to be here at now this took a whole lot of courage because he was a young man. Right. He rejected everything so he could what? Suffer with the Hebrew people. Now you know at that dispensation of time, the Hebrew people were under bondage to the Egyptians. But God had chosen a long time ago to be the leader of his first church. But had to make a decision. When he reached a certain age, in other words, when he was an adult, and reach for adulthood, he said, I'm through with this foolishness. Right, I don't want no more living. I don't want no more sickness. I don't want no more this wicked lifestyle. I want to serve God. I said at a young age. Young people, it's hard to serve God at a young age. Yeah, pretty easy when you get old, you know, done all the devil that you can do, and now all of a sudden you're old, you won't get saved. Well, God will accept you. Amen. A repentant heart. But to suffer. In the holiness church, don't wear no makeup. Go on the job with your head covered, with your dress at a proper length. No earrings swinging. Don't think that women on the job don't see you and don't talk about you. Who does she think she is? Is she holy or something? Yeah, she is holy. Holy than me? Yeah, she is. You go to the back and say, yeah, she's holy than me. How do I know? Well, just look at her and look at you. No woman professing godliness, give me first Timothy 2 and 9, yeah. is going to put on a false face. Makeup is a false face. You paint your face in the daytime to meet your public, but when you go home at night, you wash it off in, in your bed, but you wake up in the morning, same routine. Why would you paint your face knowing that it's a false face? Why? Because the world doesn't. Where did it originate from? From the temple prostitutes under the Babylonian cult religion, I dare preach it out there over YouTube. Do your research. And then go to your church and teach your people. You, your sister, you can't wear makeup, paint your face. It's a sin. The temple prostitutes under the gods is star. They learned the art of diluting uh, a, a red clay family and diluting it with some mixture and put it on their face. The fingernails they stained. But that's the act of a prostitute. In the Holman's Bible, Dixon religion, it says it's women of ill repute. Amen. 
when God delivered the Hebrew women, hallelujah, from bondage in Egypt, he said, I'm going to teach you that you don't know or remember Egypt any longer. And those things that are attributed to Egypt from Babylonians, I don't want you to remember them no more forever. And I believe in verse 48 of that passage of scripture in Ezekiel 23rd chapter, he said that all will be taught not to do after your newness, after your sinful lifestyle. Be taught. Brothers and sisters, you've got to be taught the word of God in order to live the word of God. Moses, hallelujah, when God handpicked him at an early age, he rejected Pharaoh. And Pharaoh put a curse on him and put him out the land. He went to a mountain and there he met uh, his wife, Miriam, and the father-in-law said, well, yeah, I got a job for you to do. I'm going to put you tending sheep. That's the Lord's job on the total pole back in that dispensation time. Because all you did was take your staff and then you go out and watch sheep graze. What you going to do with your spare time? Nothing. Moses did this, brothers and sisters, until he was 90 years old. What was God watching? Are you faithful? Do you mean what you said? Are you going to give up Pharaoh's lifestyle? Or are you going to turn around and go back? Year after year after year. And finally on that mountainside, what happened? He saw a burning bush. He said, wait a minute. Here's a bush on fire, but it's, it's not concerned. I can't understand this. And when God got his attention, then he said, Moses. And Moses said, here am I. He said, I want you to go and tell Pharaoh, turn my people loose and set them free. And he said, well, how can I go before Pharaoh? Who should I say sent me? He said, well, you just tell Pharaoh, I am sent you. Oh, glory, oh, hallelujah. What did, the, what did Jesus tell the Pharisees when they said, you're not old enough. You don't know nothing about no Abraham. He said, if you knew Abraham, you would love me. Because I could see the fourth king from Abraham. Hallelujah. What? You know Father Abraham? He said, I am. Hallelujah. And they knew what that term I am meant. And then they sought to crucify him. But the Bible says he disappeared from amongst them. Because his time hadn't come yet. So he just put a disappearing act. Right. I'm trying to let you know, brothers and sisters, there's a time in your life when God will call you. And you've got to do something about that period of time you will call. You're either going to accept him. Now wait. Well, yes, Lord, I accept him. But are you willing to go through the test and the trial? I'm not going to say God's going to wait till you're 90 before he decides to give you a mandate to preach or to testify or to sing in the choir. I'm not going to say he's going to do that long because he won't. But Moses was the first prophet he had to make sure. So he did this in the Bible for an example to us. You can't say, yeah, I'm called. I'm, I'm going to wait patient on the Lord. And two weeks later, you're gone. A month later, you're gone. Your testimony of life will prove itself as to who you are. Don't ever forget your positive character reflects Jesus. When God called me to preach, I never knew the I thought I was going to say, actually I thought I was going to say that. Amen, I believe that. I said, I'm just going to pray people, they're going to follow me. And little did I know, when you start teaching holiness, people are going to start rejecting you and rejecting you. And especially when you tell a sister you got to wear a bell covering. Well, what did the Bible say? Give me 1 Corinthians right there. Let's, let's do a little teaching this morning. 1 Corinthians 11, chapter, jump right. I want you to jump right into verse 1. Establish something. Be ye followers of me. Even now the apostle Paul is writing to his church. He says, be ye followers of what? Of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now, God don't come and teach you. He sent the apostles to teach you. He taught the apostles. He told the apostles to come and teach you. Now the apostles are gone. But you still got to have a teacher. Right, so that's why he rose me up to teach you. Now I praise you, brother. I praise you, brother. That you remember me in all things. Remember me in all things. And keep the ordinances. Wait, what did you say? Keep the ordinances. Keep the ordinance or the instruction I'm getting ready to give you. Read it. For I will have you to know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. Uh -huh. And the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying have his head covered with honor his head. Every man wear a hat in church as a dishonest the church. Yeah. Watch. But every woman that prayed or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonor her head. Well, that is even all one as if she as were if shaven. If she was shaven. In other words, if you don't wear a bell covering 
it's the same shame as you cutting off all your hair and coming to church. Now, in that dispensation of time, uh, punishment for a misdemeanor in the camp to a woman, they would shave all her hair off. And her sin or her punishment would be the time that it took for her hair to grow back. So Paul was using the illustration, if a woman don't wear a veil come, it's the same as she get all her hair shaved off. And she got to go in public, go to church and everything. Which, and they all, everybody looked, oh, she got her head shaved. And she done something, she didn't mess up some kind of way. So the Bible says it's the same thing. Brothers, why don't they teach this today? And go to Harlem Bible Dictionary of Religion. And it states why Paul wrote this to this on 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, because women thought on the dispensation of grace, they no longer had to wear the veil covering. Yes. Yeah. Well, you see, by grace, not by work. That's a lie. Did the Bible say so? Yeah, but you got to write it in the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you're saved by grace, that don't mean you can still smoke cigarettes, drink liquor, fornicate, Amen. be a sodomite, be a lesbian, because you're saved by grace. Amen. Lies that are put on the Christian church by hypocrite preachers, and this is why God rose me up. I'm trying to teach you the difference between right and wrong. But the return will always have to do. You don't ever have to go back to the world. God's shepherding you from the world. And you touch not the unclean things. Come out from amongst them. Amen. Hallelujah. In 1 Christian 1 and 10, he said that y'all speak the same thing. Amen. That to be what? No divisions among you. For why you got a Baptist church, Methodist church, Seventh-day Adventist church, Jehovah's Witness church, this church, it would take me what? Half the day to recite all the churches? When God only had one church, he said that y'all speak the same thing, what, preach the same Bible, and the same uh, message from the Bible, the same code of principles from the Bible, the same thing. That there be what? No divisions amongst you. You know what divisions mean? It means denomination. Right. And you never heard that before. Read 1 Corinthians 1 and 10 for yourself. Speak the same thing, that there be no divisions. Division takes the word divide. Yeah. And denominations is nothing but dividing the Christian church right. into the various groups that I named some of them. God is not divided. The church of God is not divided. What's wrong? We're not all speaking the same thing. Some of these preachers for money and money only. Yeah. Get $50 and the Lord bless you. Buy this book. There's no book that represents the church of God that's supposed to be sold for money. There's no dinner, fish fry, whatever you have in church cafeteria that you have to pay money for. There's a church right down the street uh, from uh, Mission 3. And uh, they serve dinners from, I think, 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock every day. But you have to pay $5, $7, $10, whatever's on your plate in church. Did not Jesus say it when he took, the only time Jesus ever showed anger, he made a whip and he found them exchanging money in the church. What did he do? He whipped them out the church. Yes, I said, he whipped them physically out the church. Yes, and said, you made my father's house a dinner thief. Yes, the church of God is preached the word. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. You have to sell dinner. You have to sell this and sell that. Hallelujah. Yes. The church is hungry feeding. Yes. If you need some money, give him some money. Right. Don't always take in and don't never give out. Right. I'm trying to show you the difference between right and wrong, church. If you just listen to me, but Jesus required something that people don't want to admit or don't want to go into. If you love me, keep my commandments. In other words, God loved you so much, He saved you, and died on the cross, but there's still something you got to do. And He said, Great preachers tell you, oh no, you don't have to do anything but repeat Romans 10 chapter. That's a lie. You've got to present your body as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable of the Lord, which is a reasonable service, and be not transformed in this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is acceptable things in the same of God. You gotta prove something to God. But you can't prove that to God if you don't know. I'm trying to tell you what you do. You don't smoke, cigarette, drink, click, and chase women. You don't walk funny if you're a man. Stand up and walk like a man. If you're a sister, don't be ashamed if you married and got a family. Do you know this movement that's sweeping the country now by the lesbian coalition that they make women ashamed to be have children? That's right. Be ashamed to say, oh, I'm a working class woman. Well, no, you 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 a housewife first, then you're working class. Yeah, no, 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 no. We don't believe in a housewife here. And they're trying to even uh, raise laws in certain states 
where the word wife is not used, the word husband is not used. There's neither male or female used. There's no such thing as mother, father, uncle, or aunt, because all of that is uh, against the feminist movement. We all want. Yeah, but there's still a mama. Yeah. You go to and see these signs that these, uh, we go to these uh, sodomite uh, parades yeah. with the gal rallies. Yeah. And uh, every now and then you see a sign, two mamas are better than one. And I asked when them let me say, yeah, but where did mama come from? All right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. If two mamas are better than one, I bet your mama had a mama. Right. And I bet you she had a daddy. Yeah. But there couldn't have been no mama without a daddy. Yeah. But they ought to destroy all of this. They want to destroy the human uh, existence of husband and wife and father and mother in the church because they originate from the church. So if they can break down the church and give you a false church yeah. and don't teach them about this, Oh, everything's going to be all right. No, everything ain't going to be all right because it's still going to be a church that's going to teach holiness and preach sin out. You can't preach sin out if you're a jelly belly coward, Creflo Dollar, Benny Hinn, George Myers, and all your thousands of members. And we're two dead flies. Hallelujah. Now they can come to Spartanburg, give them two weeks, they'll pack out an auditorium. But give me two months, and if you go, you might find a handful. Amen. I'm preaching truth, and they're preaching a lie. What's the difference? Because God will please the heart of a person who wants to be pleased in the way that they want to be pleased, and not the way God wants them to be pleased. See, God gives you a holiness message. It's up to you to accept it. Does it sound good like, uh, oh, my cup run is over? Everybody want to hear that about my cup when it's over. What if I pick up your cross and follow me? What about living holy for the Lord? Yeah. Can't nobody live holy. I said last week, that's a life in the pits of hell. Because I'm sure I'm living a holy life. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. And I was taught how to live holy by my pastor. And he was a holy man. And I should get down on my knees every night and say, Lord, make me like him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I cry my heart out. Make me like him. I want you to adopt after you got the Holy Ghost. Preaching, he was 92 years old. Yeah. Lay down on the couch and went to sleep, and when Mother Ralph went to wake him up, he couldn't wake up. His body called him home. Right. Oh. And they carried him to the hospital because that's what they did in those days. Yeah. And they put him in the hospital room, and uh, they said, Well, we're going to put some IVs in. Mother Ralph said, No. They don't put no, no, they don't put no, no, nothing in his veins, nothing. Right. If, he, if God called him home, he goes sleep away. And I left my job when I heard about it and I went to the hospital room. Oh. Ah. I can't talk about it without getting emotional. Oh. And I laid my hands on his forehead. He was breathing erratic. Yeah. He was still breathing. I said, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I still want to be just like you. Yeah. Oh. Brother and sister, he was a good man. Yeah. And I tried to emulate him. Yeah. And I want each and every one of you to try to emulate me. And you can if you got something inside of you that craves for righteousness. For more than nine years old, finally God was a teacher by living at that burning bush. Hallelujah. He said, now go. It's time now. Tell Pharaoh, turn my people loose. Let me show you something, Jeff. Pharaoh went and he told, uh, rather, Moses went and told Pharaoh, God said, let his people go. Now, Pharaoh had a scheme. I'm going to let him go for wait till you get between the Red Sea and my army, and then I'm going to cut them off, and that can kill every last one of them. Plan looked like it was working. Got to the Red Sea, and one of them told Moses, look, I see dust back there. What is that? Somebody said, that's Pharaoh's army. And they come with the Moses, said, what are we going to do? It's Pharaoh's army, and here's the Red Sea. And Pharaoh got a little panic, too. Moses got a little panic, too. He said, uh, Lord, what am I going to do? God said, what is that in your hand? Rod. Stretch it out. Now the rod really represents what? Where's your faith? Stretch it out. And Moses stretched out the rod and the sea parted. And they walked through, walked through the parted sea and nobody got this out of the way. How there was no mud between the toes. And then when he got to the other side, God told the people in Israel, look, if they was on, and they tried to cross the same way. 
when he got midway, God allowed that water to come back and drowned it all the Pharaoh's army. Hallelujah. And Moses said to the people, look at him. You see, right now, you'll see no more forever. I'm trying to tell you when you get the Holy Ghost inside of you, God will give you a power, hallelujah. And when that devil rise up against you, you will never see that devil no more. All you got to do is keep the blood of Jesus against you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I fix you up the body. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Sing that for me. I rebuke you. Help all you. I rebuke you. Go get it. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That enemy, you see in your life, if you stand back to the word of God, you won't see them no more forever. But forever means till the next time. Then the end that you will put then is still going to be. Hallelujah. He still got to go. Oh, praise be to God. Brothers and sisters, whenever there's a calling on your life, there must be a test of obedience. God will always give you something that you have to take a stand on for him or against him. This is what obedience is all about. Do you love God? Well, then obey his commandments. Well, I thought it was free. It is free. But you still got to obey his commandments. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's still something you have to do. If it's to wear the head cover, sisters, wear the head cover. But do it proudly. Right. Yes, he's going to talk about you in the supermarket, on the job, he's going to talk about you. Look at that long dress. And my goodness, she ain't got no makeup on. She ought to put something on her face. No, she got a beauty. Hell of a beauty that's inside. Right. She did beauty you can't watch off at night. It don't come from Max Factor. It don't come from Neighbor Lee. Yeah. Hallelujah! This thing comes from the inside of your heart. Yeah. And when you got it down on the inside, it's hard for the devil to take it out. Yeah. I'm trying to let you know, brothers and sisters, this morning, as we wind down, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. But just make up your mind you want to be strengthened by Christ. Yeah. And there's always something that you have to do. And that is you must be for real with God. You can tell, Lord, I love you, and this, that, and other. And then when you're away from you know, cross town, so, you know, I used to go cross town and buy my lobby tickets. I figured maybe nobody in the church would see me. I go cross town and buy one. Hallelujah. God condemned me that last time. And I remember that last lottery ticket I bought. I was so convicted in my heart. I rolled down my window and I looked at it. I'm driving down the road. And I said, goodbye. And I put it out the window. I don't know whether they're here or not. And don't care. That was the last long ticket I bought. And even when I woke up, you know what I said? I'm free. I'm yeah. free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. The last joke of body, I'm free. Yeah. Whether it be a cigarette package, a liquor bottle, yeah. or a dope pipe. Yeah. 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 Can I get that dope pipe in there? You ever go to drugs and see them little tiny pipes? You know what that's for? Smoking crack. But they put you in jail for smoking crack. Why go in the drug truck to buy the pipe? You answer that question. Why they got the dope pipe in the drug store, but it's wrong to smoke crack? You ever thought about that? It's wrong to get drunk. We catch you, we're going to put you in jail while you sell liquor. Cigarette smoking is hazardous to your health while you sell cigarettes. He says, it's wrong for you now. The world hates you and they use you as a dollar sign and that's all. God wants you to use you as a living testimony to the rest of the world. And be careful. Please, this is what I mean. I won't sit down for you. Don't be ashamed because you're in holiness. Well, how many of you, how many members you got? A handful. Can I tell you? What is it, six chapters? I just love this passage. Yeah. Right? And then I'm going to sit down, I promise you. Read, 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 read. Six chapters? Seven. Seven? Seven. Verse six? Read. For thou art a holy people. Thou art a holy people. Unto the Lord thy God. Unto the Lord thy God. And I you're a holy people, not to yeah. somebody else. To the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. The Lord thy God had chosen thee. Chosen thee. To be a special people. Now, did he say special? Special. Do you know special means different? You mean the Holiness Church is, 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 is better than other churches? Yes. yes. yes, yes. Who says so? God. Oh, man. Man. Special means different. Yeah. He said you're a holy people to God. Special. Yeah. Yeah. Read. Unto himself. Unto who? Unto himself. Special 
to God. Hallelujah. Right. Ooh, we read. Above all people. That's the part I was like. That was like it just, it just gets to me. Above all yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. You're on the face of the earth. Right. You're special and you're above. Now, common sense tells you the difference between below and above. Amen. He didn't say you're below people. He said you're above. That's what God said. Right. And you know, I take my word for it. I'm telling what God said. Yes. He made you above all other churches. Right. Why? Because you're a holy church unto right. himself. Right. Brothers and sisters, act like it. Yeah. Act like you're holy. And you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Don't let the devil tell you, no, you can't stop smoking. Yeah, you can. I smoke cigars. Ain't nobody else smoking cigars more than me. And when I put that cigar out in that ash tree, I miss it. All right. Hallelujah. And never smoked another one. Yeah. When my wife stepped on that pack of cigarettes, praise God from glory, that that man just called her out, she never touched another Thank cigarette. You. And she smoked five packs of death. Yeah. I know how I live there. Hallelujah. And man, I couldn't go fishing without chewing tobacco. I couldn't uh, 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 move the lawn without chewing tobacco. I ain't up my mouth spit. Nasty teacher. I'm telling you the truth. The devil will make you a disgusting creature if you let him. But when God cleaned me up, how do you boot snuck, red man tobacco, whatever kind of tobacco? How do you, I'm through with you. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, follow Christ. Make up your mind that you want to see his face in peace. And if you determine in your heart, can nobody persuade you not to follow God. Right, and God. the Holy Church is the only church yes. that God is coming back for. He said they come back for a church without a spot of wrinkle, didn't he? Right, right. Yes, sir. And he ain't come back with no cigarette smoke. Uh -huh. Liquor drinkers, dope right. users. People say, oh, I can't do it. I can't make it. Oh, please. Please, you know you can't make it, but if you've got the Holy Ghost in you, you can make it. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. Let the weak say, I'm strong. And you become strong. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. children, them that are far off, even as many as the Lord thy God shall call. And with many other words did you exalt, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. And about three thousand souls gave the truth that day, and they remained steadfast. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 And the cross, yes. and the cross, we are the first of the land. And the burden of the land.